Hello there, everybody, and welcome to this little video here. Um, this one is going to be a little bit different, and this is me talking to you more about um, your own publishing, okay? And especially if you do um, things a certain way. And, and what, what we're going to basically be getting into here is scarcity and rarity um, because they're they're two different things pretty much and um, they both matter here are all of the um, chapbooks short stories and poetry chapbooks that I put out in the last year okay looks like a bit looks like a couple okay and that's fine and when I started these when, when I started putting these ones out, because I will show you in a minute um, ones that I did before this, um, I tried to up the production value a little bit by doing cardstock covers in different colors and then um, changed from just printer paper to newsprint um, around this era and whatever. But when I started them, I didn't know... Um, how soon or how quickly they would sell. And um, I didn't really know what to guess. So I used the estimate based off of um, like how many issues of Weird Mask I was selling on average. And then I took that and I took the number of... Wait, didn't I just have those here? Oh, they're right here so stupid i took the number of chapbooks that i had made originally like not originally but like back in like 2016 um 2017 2018 and took the number of those and kind of tried to find a middle ground because um these ones sold out rather quickly and weird mask um lasted those ones hung on a bit longer but um i think those were different just because of how many people were involved in it so um word of mouth spread a little quicker so most of these um i did very small runs of um i think i did i might have done 50 of this first one and then the rest of them were like 20 like at least these guys here were, oh, sorry, we're about 20. And then this one here, the run was um, pretty small. I think I just made this for a certain event I did. But, um, and it's funny because there are other ones like bacon, okay? I don't have any more of those. Um, I have the one that I just made as like a test copy to like go through or whatever. But then, like, DNF, I only made, I think, like, eight or ten of those, something around those lines. And that was for one event, and I don't have any more of those. I had a copy of it, because when I was doing the fingering the mundane thing, I was, like, showing it off to everybody. But people who got certain tiers on the fingering the mundane thing, um, when I shipped the books out, I also gave people... Um, copies of the original chapbooks and um i think i might have given away my last copy of dnf so i don't know like i can't find it if you have it congratulations um <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute here so basically um the first like these first five books okay i made 50 copies of each of these and um, that was kind of like the mid-ground I felt that would be good. And um, whether it being me focusing on poetry, which actually I don't think is true, and I'll tell you why in a minute, um, or just my marketing or whatever, um, these have lasted a bit longer than I thought they would at least my supply of them because my idea was I would do these like these original chapbooks and when these sell out 
the ones that sell out, I will put together in collection books and just put the book out. Okay, so like Fingering the Mundane is all of these chapbooks plus others and minus others. Whereas the end of everything, um, these weren't released anywhere before this book. So this was like a book of new poetry. But even then, okay, we'll talk about this too. The end of everything um, was limited to 125 copies. And I think I have, I think I have like 40 of these left, 30 or 40 of these left. Uh, I'd have to check. <clears throat> but so when I put this up on Amazon, it's a, um, like a second edition and I wasn't going to put it up on Amazon for a while, but I feel like I kind of need to do something there. And that got really dusty all of a sudden. And the first edition of this book, because it's so much bigger, um, the first edition of this is limited to 50 copies. And the copy that is available up on Amazon um, is the second edition. So if you, like, I don't have any more of these, but if you were to buy this now, it would be the second edition of that. So um, as far as, like, the scarcity factor goes, um, we're, we're past scarcity now because I don't have any more. Um, the rarity is the fact that there were only 50 of these. And so if you have um, one of the first editions of this, there were only 50. Now, with that said, um, like these first five that um, there were only 50 of, some of them there's a lot more of than others. So, for instance, my two biggest sellers are Farmer Phoenix Rises and One Night. Um, and again, Farmer Phoenix Rises is the chapbook of poems when I, um, it's kind of like the sequel to the end of everything. And this is where um, I started taking medication to try to fix my depression and stuff like that. And One Night is um, 20 poems that I wrote in one night. Um, about all sorts of different shit. So anyway, um, this one I have, I'm going to say a number and it's not going to be accurate because I have given a couple of these away, but I think in my Etsy shop, if you count the bundle pack and these, I think I have 26 of these left. So that's that. And this one, I think I have 21 left. And a lot of this, too, is because this came out the same month as the campaign for Fingering the Mundane. So everyone over a certain tier got a copy of this. So there are some, um, it's kind of like loot boxes with comic books. Like, there, there are some artificial numbers in there, definitely. But um, not fucking many at all. So anyway, so the rarity of, of this stuff is that there's only 50 copies of them. The scarcity is the fact that I only have like 21 copies of this left. Now that doesn't seem that scarce. Now at first I thought, I'm like, shit, like I know poetry doesn't sell very well, but you know, like, oh, like whatever, you know? And so I was thinking about that. But then when I looked at the chat books that I have like up on Etsy that have done the least amount of sales, it would be these two anxious anxiety and panic. And I'm like, okay, why is this? And it is because I think these are short story collections. Okay. They are not poetry collections. The poetry collections like this sell way better than short story collections. Now, is this just me? Is it because I don't push my short stories as much as I push my poetry, maybe, but um, like, I really feel like a lot of my traffic on Etsy is organic through Etsy. So 
I, I don't know if that has anything to do with me because I don't really do anything once the books are up on Etsy. Like, I don't do anything on Etsy once they're up there. So anyway, so that's that. So these have not sold very many. This this is the worst selling one. And it's crazy because this one has um, Unsane Sam, Killing a P3, Free Kindle Books, and Gonorrhea. And I think all four of those stories are fucking hysterical. But, um, and just weird. But um, it's just, it's it's one of those things. Like, maybe it's the cover. Maybe it's the title. Maybe everyone's like, panic. I don't want to be fucking panicked. But um, a lot of my short stories, um, at least when I read them, like, I'm basically having a panic attack because that's how I feel when I write short stories. And I think that's how the stories come across. So, um, anxious anxiety, another um, good point out for that. So these ones are rare in the sense that there's only 50 of them, but the scarcity isn't there because I still have a, a ton of them. Okay. Mart is another one that's weird. And this is why, okay. This is going to sound like a crazy, stupid story, but I'm going to tell it to you. <laughs> when I made this book, I printed out a bunch of copies of this. The copies I printed out um, were damaged, let's say. And I was at the point where I'm like, okay, they're fucked. I'm not going to print more of them. This is what they are. I'll just hand them out. But there were like big streaks through a lot of the lettering in the book. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to make any more whatever. And then, so there were probably only like 10 or 15 of these that weren't fucked up. And I sold almost all of those immediately. And I'm like, well, there you go. The 15 of them are gone and that's it. Like no more of this book. Well, then the next month I did the one night book and the same fucking thing happened. And I had a bunch of streaks through the printing and I was all fucking pissed off again. And I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. And I was like completely losing my mind about it because fucking ink's expensive and paper fucking gets expensive when you're making this quantity. And when all of them are fucked, like, what are you going to do with it? So basically I'm like, okay, so all of these are trash. Well, not this, this, all of these are trash. So what am I going to do? Am I just going to say, yeah, I put out a chat book and now no, no one can read it. Like that's fucking stupid. So I went and got more paper. Um, I got another thing of ink and cleaned my ink and all that other shit and um, reprinted all of these books. And then the ones that were printed, I fucking threw away. Now I'm not going to count those as, um, cause I didn't bind them or anything like that. They were just the printed pages. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to count these as copies because then there would be a hundred copies of it, but 50 of these copies will never see the light of day. So what do I do with that? So I made it and whatever. And then, so in, I guess it was September when I decided to do it, I went back and I printed out the, um, whatever, 35 more copies of this. So there was a period where the scarcity and rarity of this was really high. And then I, I like fixed it because it was, um, not inorganic. Um, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So that was that. Now, when we get into the rest of these, I started doing different things. And a lot of this is because, um, I am a fan of the Misfits, and um, when this was like early 2000s, I was really in to collecting their vinyl, like their original record pressings. And some of their vinyl was so weird. Like, it would be like, okay, this one has... Um, the name is this color and the background's this color. And there's like 33 copies of that. And then there's 66 copies of it with this color and this background. And then there's um, 10 copies of it with white vinyl. And there's um, some ridiculous number 
like 120 of these in black vinyl. But um, the thing that I wanted so bad, and I don't even know if it is like the holy grail for misfits collectors, but it was the holy grail for me. And I kept looking for it and kept looking for it, and I never found it. But um, the Legacy of Brutality collection. It actually came out after the band broke up, whatever. It was pressed 16 copies on pink vinyl. And I was like, I have to have that. I must own that now. So, like, that was, like, the thing. Like, just weird numbers just to see, like... I mean, for that, it was, like, definitely a scarcity thing and super fucking rare. But, so, with these next ones, and, again, you can see, like, this is the My Face logo on top of the Misfits um, Crimson Ghost logo. So, that's uh, me with the glasses there. So, um, with this one, 13 Miles South of Hell, I wanted to, like, kind of do something like that. So, I started changing up the number of copies I made. And so this one, I went with 25, okay? So there's 25 copies of this out there. Um, I don't know how many I have left, actually. Um, I think I have 16 of those left. And then I kept just doing different stuff. So this one is 15, okay? This one is only 13. And originally, I only did 13 of this because Funeral for a Friend, this is a book of, like, sad love poems to my dead computer. And I honestly didn't think anyone would want to fucking read this. And, um... This was more for me than for anybody else. And um, I'm shocked that um, this one sells pretty okay for what it is and how long it's been out. And we're going to come back to this in a minute. So P.O. Box 3054. This one I did 20 copies of. Um, and then when we got to shit poems, this one I made... 25 copies of and then we got to a couple that I didn't think would do very well at all so I could write racetrack poems too fucker this one I only made seven copies of okay and honestly because I think that no one will want to read this so this is just like one of these weird little things um and like most people you talk to, like, if they like Bukowski, let's say, they hate his racetrack stuff. Like, everybody hates it. Um, so, in doing that and keeping that in mind, I'm like, yeah, most people aren't going to like this. So, I'm not going to go whole hog on this. And then, with Red Book, this one here, this one is very thin. It's probably my smallest one. It's, uh, so that would be... 16 pages um and this is just a book of poems that have the color red involved in it and i just thought it was a neat idea to do a book about it but since it was so small i'm like oh. so this one i did 11 copies of and then finally the last one i have here the coldest beer in the desert this one i have 19 copies of and that's because my kid turned 19 this year and this is the cover my kid did and um it came out this month my kid's birthday was this month 19 years old 19 copies the whole thing now with that said let's talk a little bit about the whole scarcity thing so as far as the books I have with the fewest amount, okay, left, it would be these three, okay? Now, mainly it's because 
I didn't make many copies of him. But, um, it's this one, for instance. I think I only have three copies of this left. Um, and I did 13. So, I think there's... There might be... I don't know. There's a, I have a couple... I have them set aside. I have a couple left in the shop. And then I have um, a few set aside for the bundle packs. If you get the bundle pack. Um, but because this... I don't have many of it. I'm not going to make any more of the scarcity of that will increase the price of that. If that makes sense. Now, a lot of people talk about how this is a practice that is disgusting and the whole deal, but this is the collector's market. And I'm not saying that I'm like a high quality collectible thing, but this is how it, it works. Like when you have less of something, you could charge more for it than if you have a lot of something. So um, this guy, I don't have many of these left. These ones, on the other hand, I don't have a lot left, but that's because I didn't make a lot of them. The moral of this, I guess, or what I'm trying to get at with you is that when you make digital products, your digital products, there is no scarcity with it. There is no rarity with it. There is actually not much of anything to it. Because if you are buying books on Amazon, let's say, like for your Kindle, and you want to make a change to that book because you found like a spelling error or something like that, or you need to give credit to whoever made the cover and you forgot to do that or something. When you upload the new file, that new file will be as soon as people's e-readers hit the internet or like get access to the internet or if they um, haven't downloaded the book yet, but they purchased it, you know, even if they have it in their Kindle, when they connect to the internet there, that Kindle book is now going to be the new version of that book. And the original version or the version before you sent anything up to it is no longer there. <clears throat> so digitally speaking, there is like nothing that um, can have any form of rarity as far as that goes. And then when you go into the um, realm of print on demand, like when if you were putting your like paperback books out through Amazon or something, um, they can make as many of those as you want until you take it down. Then if you were to make a, another edition of that, that would help because at that point, when you make the new edition of it, it changes the ISBN number. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it doesn't. I think it does though. Cause when I've put books back up, um, I had to get a new ISBN for it. Um, let me know if that's not how that works. And maybe I just did it wrong. But that makes some sort of collectability for that. But the problem with that is, is when you're doing shit on demand like that, you're, the, the buyer doesn't know how many copies of something there are going to be. And we kind of live in a world where um, things should just always be. So, like, whether or not, like, so if I went and got like a hundred copies of this book printed. Okay. And then I ran out. I could just go out and print a hundred more and sell them to people. Okay. Or I could just leave it up on Amazon and people can order books whenever the fuck they want. And then after like 872, I could go, you know what? I'm kind of done. I don't want this book out there anymore. <clears throat> but when you do something like that, the people who are buying it don't know what the value of that book on a scarcity level is or a rarity level is because there none of that is there. And that could be cool. That could be good. 
but as someone who collected vinyl, who um, collects vintage paperback books, who um, collects zines and chapbooks, who collects comic books, like knowing the print run of the things you get is really important. And seriously, maybe I am like way too in the weeds on this. I probably will be. The more I hear myself talk, the more I'm going, I'm like second guessing myself. I'm like, oh my God, have I been crazy all these years? Do I need to chill the fuck out? What the fuck is going on? What I'm getting at is, is that you as a writer, you as a poet, you as whatever, if you are making your own content and you are creating your own tangible products, you can decide how many of those things are going to come out. You could decide like how many of these, like there will only be, um, there will only be 19 people who own a copy of this. And it is, they are all signed and numbered by me. Okay, so you know when you get one of these, you are one of only 19 people who are ever going to have this. So basically, as a publisher, you get to decide um, what things are going to be worth more based on how many things you print. And like I said, when these sell out, I'm going to collect them together and put them in books that can be printed on demand on Amazon so everyone can get them. But the original copies of these, the original releases of these are going to be special for the people who love them and for the people who love you as an artist, you know, like, and it's the same thing. Like, um, like fucking Andy Warhol, okay? He made prints and he would create a piece of art and he would print out like, um, I don't know, fucking like a hundred of a certain print or 30 of a certain print. And um, the amount of those that were made um, make the value of those what they are. So whether you're Andy Warhol or me, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, your art is worth something. And don't let anyone tell you that your art, whether it's writing or painting or photography or whatever, don't let anyone tell you or trick you into the, the idea that your art is not worth enough, that your art isn't worth doing something like this for. It's yours. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it. If I wanted to make one copy of this and sell it for a thousand dollars, I could do it. Would anyone buy it? I don't fucking know. Maybe after I die, but up until then, maybe not. So it's like you can do whatever you want. Your art is yours to do what you want with. And creating um, rarity and scarcity among the things you make is completely up to you with how you want to do it. Um, I wouldn't recommend making everything like that. Um, if you made everything only like a couple copies, that might get kind of old kind of quick, but having like different levels of it is kind of a neat thing. And, um, and that's what I was trying to do with my Patreon, but it ended up not working like that where like I wanted to do something where, um, say for instance, this, since it's on top, like if I made 20 of these with this, like kind of brown gray cover and then my Patreon subscribers would get this same book, but with a special cover, like that was like maybe blue and it would only be, there would only be as many numbers as I had patrons on Patreon. Um, so that would increase the um, rarity of that product, um, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, just something to think about for you out there who want to make your own zines, make your own chat books, and do your own shit like that. Um, anyway, let me know what you think down below. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you join um, my members group, the crew. I posted a video yesterday of me um, tackling 
the first huge edit of Bacon, where I took um, chapter six and turned it into its own short story. So, and that was horrifying. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are all doing okay, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.